Welcome to all that have joined us for this next 15 minutes or so as we present the good news of the gospel. My name is Roland Pickering and it is my privilege to make known the way of salvation. This broadcast comes to you in association with the Christians who meet in the Limavati Gospel Hall. Now, just before we would uh, read uh, and speak, we'll just ask the Lord's blessing. Gracious God, we come to thee just now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we do pray that thou wouldst bless thy word and what we would say upon it, that hearts might be reached and blessed and come to know the Lord Jesus as their own and personal Saviour. We give thanks for such a message that we have to tell, and we pray thy blessing in the Lord's name. Amen. I just want to read with you one verse. It's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 21. It's the message of the angel to Joseph regarding the birth of the Lord Jesus. And the message is this, that she shall bring forth a son, that's Mary, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Well, that's all we read with the Lord's blessing. I want just to think with you for a little while of that name, that name that was given the name of Jesus. That precious name, that very special name. And to think about it in this way, the five letters and using an acrostic just to get a word for each letter that would tell us something about this blessed person. The letter J would tell me of the journey that he made when he came from heaven to earth. We live in a world of travel, we all know that. People make great and long journeys every day across the world. But this is a journey that is different from all others. This journey from heaven coming right down to earth into this world. You know, the Bible says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. We're glad that he ever came. The fact is, if he never had come, he could never have died. But that journey that he made it cannot be measured in miles or kilometers. It's a way beyond measuring that journey that the Lord Jesus took. From the very splendors and wonders and grandeurs of heaven into this world. This world that was tainted and tarnished by sin. He came to the lowly Scenes of Bethlehem, where Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling bands and laid him in a manger. Thank God today that Jesus came. The journey that he took. I want you to think about the letter E and to use the word, the entreaty. Because, you know, the Lord Jesus, when he was here in this world, he invited people, he welcomed people to come to him. And he's just the same today. He is still entreating and desiring men and women and young people that they might come to him and find forgiveness and find salvation. I thought of some of the entreaties that the Lord Jesus gave. You know, on one occasion, he says, 
He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Those three words, let him hear. In other words, to give attention. We all know that we live in a busy world and there are many, many things that call for our attention every day. But it's a good thing just to stop and to be willing to listen to his voice, to hear what the Lord our God would say unto us. You know, the Bible speaks about hearing. The Lord Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Sadly, there are many people and their ears are stopped. Their hearts are hard and they don't want to hear. But here's a message that we all need to be acquainted with. Here is something that we need to listen to. The words of the Savior, the words of Christ, to give attention to it. To realize that this is something that is more important than anything else in all the world. That is the salvation of your soul. And the reality is that it is your soul. And it is of infinite value. Remember then, just to think about it and to hear the Lord Jesus said, Hear, the word of God says, Hear, and your soul shall live. So it's a good thing just to pay attention to his entreaty. He says, Let him hear. And then there was another time when he said, Let him come. In John chapter 7. There he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. There it's the thought of action. You've got to come. Let him hear. That's to give attention. Now the Lord says to you and me, let him come. The action that is required. You see, if we're ever going to get to heaven, we've got to come to Christ. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we read of many individuals who came to the Lord Jesus. Some from all different backgrounds, different walks of life, in different stratas of society, and yet they came to Christ. I'm glad that I came. Multitudes over the centuries have come and none have been turned away. The Lord Jesus said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Let him hear. Let him come. Another one. The Lord Jesus entreats in the book of the Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 17, right at the end of our Bible, he says, let him take of the water of life freely. Here's the thought of acceptance, to take. How simple that is. We read in Romans 6 and verse 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I wonder today, will you take, will you receive this greatest blessing of all to come in your need as a sinner, in repentance, and realize that this one called Jesus the only one who can do anything for us, who can meet our need, who can bring us to heaven. 
So we've got the letter J that tells us of the journey. And then the letter E that tells us of his entreaty. What about the letter S? Well, there are different words you could go for that, couldn't you? But I thought of the letter S here as to think of suffering. You see, when the Lord Jesus was on the cross, they wrote this name above him. This is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. The one who came into this world, that great journey that he took. The one who entreats, who invites you and I to come to him, is the one who suffered for us upon the cross. The Bible says that Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. We all know that we live in a world where there's great suffering, a suffering humanity. We're aware of that every day as you listen to the news and the things that are happening. We live in a world of, of suffering. But let us never forget that the Lord Jesus on the cross, he suffered as no one else ever did or ever could. He became the bearer of sin. And the judgment that was due to sin fell on him. That God poured out his judgment upon his own son because of our sins. That we might be free and forgiven our sins and find Christ and find life. But you've got to come and accept it. Well then, very quickly, what about the letter U? J-E-S-U-S. -S. And I put there the word unchanging. Well, that's a great thing, isn't it? To think about. The world in which we live is changing all the time. Our lives change personally. Things change locally, nationally, globally. We live in a world of endless, relentless change. But the Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same. Yesterday and today and forever. How good that is. In a changing world, there is a non-changing Christ. Henry Light, who was educated at Pretoria Royal in Inniskillen, went on to be a Church of England minister, a godly man. It was he who wrote the words, swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day, change and decay, in all around I see, O thou who changest not, abide with me. It's good to know someone who's just the same. Jesus Christ, the same. The unchanging one. To have a friend like that, that knows no fluctuation, that knows no difference. There is one who remaineth faithful. Do you know him? Have you come to know this Savior? Well, let me come to the last letter, the second S in the name of Jesus. And I'm sure you've probably by now got the word that I'm thinking about, because that last letter S would tell me the great truth that he saves. Jesus saves. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation. We quote it again, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners.
the angel said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He could save you today. He saves every day. I believe that there's not a day that runs its course, but somewhere in this world, there are people who get saved. It could be you today, and it can be you, but you've got to trust him. You've got to respond to the entreaty and take Christ as Savior, repenting of your sins, reaching out to him. He saves. He saves from. The Bible says that we might be saved from wrath through him. How solemn that is. An eternity that is forever. But if not saved, then lost. If not in heaven, then sadly in hell. But there's one who can save. He saves from, from wrath, from judgment. He saves for, he saves for heaven. He can bring you there. What a savior is Jesus the Lord. It's a great thing to know him, to have trusted him, to be depending on him. And to know in your heart, he has saved me. That's what Paul said, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling. That name of Jesus, the simple acrostic, I trust you'll remember it. But more than that, that you'll act upon it. And today, that you might reach out to Christ and be saved by his grace cleansed by the blood of Christ, and be assured of heaven forever. Thank you for listening. And shall we pray? Gracious God, we ask thy blessing upon thy word. We thank thee for that lovely name of Jesus. We thank thee that he does save, and he will save all who will come. We pray thy blessing then upon the many friends that would be listening even today, that they might come to the Savior and make no delay. We ask this in thy precious name. Amen. Thank you again for listening.